Welcome to Got Science. I'm Bob Midden. For the next few minutes, we'll be discussing exothermic and endothermic chemical reactions and two simple investigations that you can conduct in your classroom. All of the materials used are relatively inexpensive and easy to obtain. Detailed instructions and a list of materials and vendors are available at wbgu.org. Our goal is to provide students with a basic understanding of the fact that chemical reactions are either exothermic or endothermic. We recommend that you focus first on exothermic reactions. These are fairly common and should be easier for your students to grasp. You can begin with an in-class discussion of some familiar examples like the burning of fossil fuels to produce energy. Your students may not realize that exothermic reactions heat and light our homes, cook our foods, and power our vehicles. Our exothermic demonstration uses a consumer product called heater meals. Each box contains prepackaged food, a packet of salt water, and a plastic cooking pouch that includes a patented heating element. Once the exothermic reaction is started, the food is heated rapidly through the oxidation of magnesium. This process is initiated by the addition of salt water. As illustrated here, magnesium combines with water to form magnesium hydroxide, hydrogen, and of course, heat. The heating element is composed of an electrolyte and a supercorroding magnesium iron alloy powder. These are dispersed throughout a porous matrix formed from polymeric powders. Adding water activates the electrolyte and starts a rapid oxidation of the magnesium with the iron serving as a catalyst. During the investigation, you and your students will monitor the reaction using a thermocouple to record changes in temperature. A great deal of heat is released, so you'll need to use a tempered baking dish and should observe appropriate safety precautions. And be sure to monitor your students at all times. Endothermic chemical reactions that occur spontaneously at room temperature are not as common as exothermic reactions, the demonstration we recommend combines barium hydroxide and ammonium chloride to freeze a beaker to a piece of wood. We suggest that you begin with an in-class discussion of the differences between endo and exothermic reactions. Everyday examples of endothermic reactions are the cold packs used for injuries. In reality, these packs use an endothermic process to absorb heat rather than a chemical reaction, but this example will help your students grasp the concept quickly and you can discuss the distinctions. During the investigation, you'll mix the chemicals together in a beaker. The reaction will produce water and create a slurry. The drop in temperature will begin quickly and here again, you'll use a thermocouple to monitor the results. During this process, you and your students will apply a few drops of water to a piece of ordinary wood, then place the beaker on top. The temperature should continue to drop as low as minus 28 degrees Celsius. After two or three minutes at this temperature, the beaker should freeze solidly to the wood. The chemical equation for the reaction looks like this. Barium hydroxide combines with ammonium chloride and heat to produce barium chloride, ammonia, and water. Due to the low temperatures involved, you'll again want to follow appropriate safety procedures and monitor your students at all times. You can find a number of discussion questions, an assessment example, and other information at our website. We encourage you to experiment with these demonstrations and create the best possible learning experience for you and your students. Learning can and should be fun. For Got Science, I'm Bob Midden.